Yeah, those who are online, I hope you're able to hear me, right? Yes, sir. Okay. What was the last topic we saw? This is just series and panel, right? Okay, we want the next topic that is about cells. EMF and terminal voltage. Let's say you go to a shop, okay, you buy a battery, then it is something like this. Okay, ignore the diagram, but try to imagine. You buy a battery, you will have a bulk portion on one side, and the other side will be a flat surface. What is this bulk portion? You will be able to see a plus symbol here, and you will be able to see a minus symbol here. So inside it, you will have a chemical, right? So have you ever observed? And, uh, what you go and ask for battery? Let's say okay, the TV won't stop talking. Okay. You want to go and get a battery to connect. So what will you go to the shop and ask? Have you ever done that? Have you ever asked the shopkeeper in terms of footage? You never go and say that I need a 5 volt battery, I need a 10 volt battery. Unless it is an electric shop. You go to some Smaller shop, right? What you generally ask for them is if you go for supermarkets and everything, generally you use the word double and triple, right? And you have seen other batteries with a slightly bulk shape, which will be in a rectangular format. That's generally somewhere around 9 volt. Okay, now I have this 1.5 volt say you're asking me, what does this 1.5 volt mean? Let's say it's a 1.5 volt double battery, what does that 1.5 volt mean according to us? So, this is whenever we say volt, the thing that comes to our mind is potential, right? But I want to explain one small topic. Potential is there. Potential is between whom? Between the positive and the negative terminal. Now, the question is when you buy it from the shop, are you connecting this device or the battery across any device? Are you connecting this battery across any device? Like when you buy it from the shop, and you see here there is a lot of potential. Okay. So when you generally buy it from the shop, it is this is a battery concentrate. Right? It is not connected across any device. You can connect it across a bulb or something for it to be. So can I call this condition as open condition? Are you guys able to understand what I mean by open condition? Means when a particular energy supplying source is not connected across any device, means no current is drawn from it, I can call it as an open condition. So, in this open condition, if you are able to measure this potential difference, it is actually not called as potential difference, rather, you call it as EMF. So, to put it in simple terms, 
if you are able to measure the potential return for a particular something in Cooper condition, that particular value of value that you are reporting is actually not the actually not generally call it as terminal voltage. I'll come to that. What do I mean by terminal voltage? It's not called as terminal voltage. You call it as EMF. Okay. So why I have to give this example is because EMF is potential difference in open condition. So when you take this battery and put it in a circuit, it will start supplying some current, right? At that point, if you take a voltmeter and try to measure the value of the potential difference across the ends of this battery, it will more be 1.5. Do you think it will be less than that or greater than that? It will be lesser than that. Okay, that lesser value which the device is able to measure is called as terminal value. We will not go through it. Are you able to understand? So, if you look at the diagrammatic representation of this, it will do something like this. If you have a chemical, it will have a positive and a negative terminal that will be here. So, between these two ends, what will happen is there will be some potential difference. So, recollect the basic definition of potential difference. What is potential difference? It is the amount of work done per unit charge. Right? Potential is amount of work done per unit and potential to measure between two different points. I hope you remember, you remember this. Correct? Right now, when you dip this into the electrolyte, what will happen to this electrolyte? Suppose I call it as NAC, okay? which is an ionic compound. Now, what will happen to it? It will get split into NAS and CL. So, what will happen to the positive ion? They can get attracted to the negative terminal, and the negative ions can get attracted. So, there is motion of ions taking place within an electron. So, if you, somebody asks you, what are the majority charge carriers inside an electron? What will you see? Yeah. What are the majority charge carriers inside an electron? They are ions. What are the majority charge carriers inside a conductor? They are electrons. Are you able to understand what majority charge carrier is? The ones the particles which are actually contributing to the electric current in a particular device are called as majority charge carriers. So I reiterate, majority charge carriers inside an electrolyte is electrolyte are ions. It can be positive and negative both because both of them have mobility. They are able to move within the conductor, within the system. Secondly, you have metallic conductor. If you talk about the metallic conductor, what are the majority charge carriers? They are electrons. Have this thing in your mind. Now comes an important question. If the positive ions and the negative ions are moving in this way, now when they are trying to move within this medium, do you think they will have a smooth transition or will they experience some So they are going to experience some resistance because there is some liquid which is present. So obviously, when a particle is trying to travel within a liquid medium, it is going to experience some, I can call it as frictional proof, right? More technically, we'll call this as resistance, and this is happening within the cell, right? So this kind of resistance is generally called as internal resistance. Are you guys able to understand? So that's why if you see in your textbook, right, they have given you cells, EMF, and internal resistance. So we were discussing about the other resistance, right? Which you connected to the circuit. What are they called as? They are external resistors we, that we connect. Do we have something to do with internal resistance? It depends on what kind of a chemical you are using and what kind of ions are moving. Okay, so I hope you are able to understand right now. Let's try to give a definition for everything. EMF, any idea about what the form of it? We call it as electro motor force. Okay, one misguiding factor here is because the word force is there, we will start thinking that it is force to move. It is amount of work done. Right? So, what can, how we define electromotive force as? It is defined as the, it is defined as the potential difference across the terminals of a cell in open condition. What do you mean by open condition? The bracket you can write it down when no current is drawn from the circuit. So I repeat it, guys, write it down. EMF is defined as the potential difference across the terminals of a cell in open condition. Across the terminals of a cell in 
open condition. Here. So what? How do you define internal resistance as? So internal resistance is always represented by the symbol small r. Okay. How do you define internal resistance as? Okay, you give your own definition. There is nothing there. They are going to ask you next time. Okay. They will not ask you what to define internal resistance. Can you tell me? So resistance offered by Offered by the electrolytic solution to the flow of ion to receive the flow of ions. Right. It is the resistance offered by the electrolytic solution resistance offered by the electrolytic solution to the flow of Ions, the flow of ions. That's okay. So here, so having this point in mind, let's see how a particular cell will meter the resistance in the second electromagnet. So what did I tell you? A cell is cell is only a positive and a negative terminal. So if I take a positive and a negative terminal, I can call it as cell. So if the cell has EMF, uh, the symbol used for EMF is also epsilon of A. You can either use it as epsilon or capital E, whichever is coming. You can go. Okay. And if this cell is having an internal resistance, you will draw an attachment like this. And you will put a box now. Means you are telling the person who is reading your paper that this is a cell with some internal resistance R. All these two together will form a system. You remember yesterday we saw a problem that 16 volt and 1 ohm internal. Actually, the diagram should have looked like this. Since it was not like this, only I could take the 1 ohm also as the external resistor and then solve the problem. Okay, so this is how it looks. Please make a note of it. So you can write the heading for it. Diagrammatic representation of cell with EMF E and internal resistance R. Can you this? Let's see uh, the next topic. See, the terminal voltage is there, it has no voltage. So, you can leave one line space. I'll tell you about it later. Okay. Now, I need to explain another concept called as is Jostrom. Okay, this is different.
I know the next heading as Kirchhoff's law. Double H O double F S loss. The next topic we are going to discuss the Kirchhoff's loss. EMF is different, internet is sensitive. EMF is potential difference across the circuit. R is the resistance offered by the electrolyte. Generally, when you take any cell, right, any cell by default will have some internal resistance. That is what I'm trying to say. If it does not have any internal resistance, the point as an ideal symbol will never exist. I'll come to the down terminal voltage. Yeah, Kash, you are asking something. So the blow, the board is blurred, sir. Every ten seconds. Yeah, it's I am trying to add this for just a minute. I am not sure what is the issue. Just a minute. Better now. Yes, sir. Are you able to see it straight or is it in reverse? Yes, sir. It is straight, sir. Straight only, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, right now, the next heading is Christoph's loss. Okay. So, under this, you have two laws. One we call it as Christoph's. Current law, which I call it as KCL. Okay, and the next one is called as the job voltage law, which we can call it as KVL. Okay, so the switch of current law is also sometimes referred to as junction rule. It is called a junction rule, and the Kirchhoff's voltage law is sometimes referred to as loop rule. Can make a note of this now. Now I am going to discuss about the Kirchhoff's current law. Please write down the definition. Please write down the definition for it. In a given network, in a given network, at a given junction, in a given network, at a given junction. The amount of current, the amount of current entering the junction will be equal to, will be equal to the amount of current leaving the junction. Will be equal to the amount of current leaving the junction. Okay. Let me explain what it means. See, yesterday we saw resistors in the parallel condition. Do you know that? V, R1, R2, something like this. Right? So, when you say the current supply by the battery is high, this is what is called as a junction. So, at the junction, what will happen? The current gets split. Yesterday we called it as I1 and the remaining current I2, which is flowing through the second resistor also. Right. Now, according to the statement, what they are trying to say is if you take a particular junction, if I draw a separate diagram of it, then current is entering towards the junction at this point. Right? 
here I have one part getting split, and here I have another part getting split. So this is the one which is supplying the current. At the junction, the current will get split in such a way that the sum of the current entering the junction, that is I, will be equal to the sum of the current that is leaving the junction. So I1 plus I2 is equal to I, that is what they are trying to say. Is that clear? So read the statement and try to relate to it, you will understand it. The amount of current entering the junction is equal to the amount of current leaving the junction. If I try to re rewrite the statement as I minus I1 minus I2 or I minus of I1 plus I2 is equal to 0, then how can you define this as I minus of I1 plus I2 is equal to 0? How can I define this as? The sum of the current, the sum of the currents entering the junction and leaving the junction put together is always. Zero. So this is another state, other way of stating the thing. I repeat it. What, what can I say? The sum of the currents entering the junction and leaving the junction together is zero. What sum are you doing? You're doing algebraic sum. So in this algebraic sum, what sign notation are you following? Current entering the junction, you take it as positive. Currents leaving the junction, you take it as negative. See, this is already a known fact, but you need to understand how this law works. Are you guys able to understand? Is it clear? Shall I proceed? Okay. So, right on the next slide, it has it shows voltage law. Right, those were all in any doubt? No, sir. So, right on the next slide, it has switch stops, voltage, you know. Okay, so how do we define this as? Write it down. The algebraic sum the algebraic sum of EMF, I repeat your question, the algebraic sum of EMF and the product of product of current across a resistor, product of current across a resistor and the resistance of the device and the resistance of the device is equal to, sorry, uh, resistance of the device in a closed loop. Resistance of the device in a closed loop is always equal to zero. Always equal to. Let me explain the statement. So what I am trying to say is, um, let me take a simple example. This is a cell of E L and E. And let me call this as internal resistance R, and let me call this as an external resistance R. Okay. Now I am giving you a task to find out the value of the current that is going through the circuit. How do you find the value of the current that is going through the circuit? So this is internal resistance, right? Now what can you do? That one is this. Internal resistance is in series with the external resistance. So, what will be the equivalent resistance of this network? Can I treat the same circuit as the battery of the cell of EMFP being connected across instead of resistor R? Can I call it as resistor R 
plus column where I will call this as i. Okay. Now what will be the relation between e is equal to i r? So e is equal to i into r plus of right now. So what will be the value of i? Be e divided by r plus of. Clear this? But this is simple thing. I I use Ohm's law. But what I will try to discuss is I will discuss the Ohm's law. We are trying to discuss some other law which is called as exhaust voltage. So what does the statement tell us? What does the statement tell us? If you have a closed loop, right? If you have a closed loop, the algebraic sum of Ohm, the algebraic sum of EMR, and it's a product of current. And current across the resistor and its resistance put together the voltage equal to zero. Okay, let me explain how it works. Why I use the word algebraic sum? Like for given, e is e plus i into r plus r is equal to zero. See, had I not applied algebraic law, what would have happened? E plus i into r plus small r is equal to zero. Is this thing and this thing the same? What is the difference? Here plus, there it is minus. Correct now. So if I don't use the word algebraic, I would have directly taken the scalar values and added, which would have given us a wrong result. But what are we supposed to do? We need to take the algebraic value. So how to do this? Answer. Okay. This one important thing I'm going to tell you. See what I'm telling you, which is slightly different from what is given to you. You can follow either of them. Okay, so uh, I give you a simple technique. Always first define the direction of current. So by default, okay, what is the direction of current? Current always goes from higher to lower voltage. Right? Higher, it goes on towards the lower voltage. So in this case, it is the anti-clockwise direction. There is no doubt about it. Okay. Now label the loop. A, B, C. So, how do you start writing this? A, B, A, B, C, B, A. If you become a loop, only if you start with the same letter and end with the same letter. Or as you could have said, B, C, D, B, B, sorry, B, C, D, A, B, something like that. Okay. So, in this loop, what you are going to do first, count the number of active devices and passive devices. That tell you what does it mean. Any idea of what are active and what are passive devices? Active devices are the ones which supply energy. So here, this one is supplying energy. So there is one active element, and the one which consumes energy is called as passive. You have two resistors, so they both are going to consume energy. They both are passive elements. So to all of them together, you have three elements. So when you write the Gibbs voltage law, the expression which you are writing before that zero should have three terms. One term is missing here, on the clear? So you have defined the direction of current. Now what you do is, when I say you A, B, C, D, right? When you are taking the two, it is your free to choose. It is not necessary. If you observe the current is going in anti-clockwise direction, but what is the way I consider the loop? I consider it clockwise. So considering the loop has nothing to do with the direction of current, what's going to be loop? Because many people think that they should assume it only in the direction. Current should be in perfect direction because current by default always goes from higher to lower potential. But the loop you are considering can be in any way. Taking that into consideration, when you are walking from A to B, right? When you are walking from A to B, how many devices are you hold? How many devices are you encountering? One active and one passive. Okay. So current is in this direction. Have it in your mind. So current across this device will be in this direction. Will be the same height. Is that clear? Is no also take a pencil and start marking as H and L. H represents higher potential, and L represents lower potential. Obviously, right? So if I look at the cell, which one is at higher potential? Obviously, trigger line. So you write H here. And you write L here. That is across the terminals of the cell or a battery. 
across the resistor, how will you find which is higher and which is lower, depending on the direction of current. So if you observe here, the current is going like this. Current across this resistor is going from left to right, so this one is a higher potential. This is a higher, and this is a lower. Is it clear? Again, you are going like this. Direction of current is like this. Inside the side, it is lower. Right is higher or left is higher? Right is higher and left is lower. Are you clear with this? Are you able to understand? No. When you are taking the loop, if you are walking across a loop or across a particular, uh, uh, between two points, from higher to lower potential, you need to put a minus sign because you tend to lose energy. Suppose I take this marginal, this is a higher potential or lower potential with respect to the ground. Higher potential. If I drop this, it is going to lose its potential, right? So when you move from higher to lower, potential is dropped. So that is why I say that when you are moving from H to L, take it as negative. And when you are moving from L to H, take it as positive. Is that clear? Now, having all these things in mind, tell me. So, when you are walking from A to B, the first device you are encountering is a cell. So, across the cell, are you walking from H to L or A to H? H to L. So, you are going to lose energy. So, put minus. So, when you are writing it across the cell, you write potential with that. When you are writing it across the resistor, you write I into R. Okay. Across the resistor. You are walking from lower to higher. Sorry. So lower to higher means plus. Plus of what? What does the statement tell us? I into R. Right so this is potential difference, this is also potential difference. Again, you are going from B to C. So A to B is done. You are going from B to C. From B to C and not able to see any device. And you are going from C to D. So you're walking from lower to higher. Lower to higher, you're going to gain energy of how much value? I SI capital R. Very good. I into capital R. Right. Again, when you go from B to A, there is modulus. You're done. So three terms in the expression, three devices. So we are right. E by this to C. Now this E will go to the other side. E will be equal to I into Small r plus capital R. So, what will be the value of A? It will be E divided by small r plus capital R. Is it not the same? It should be the same, but you can ask yourself what's at this point. So, maybe we need to use the tools of the It is mainly used for complicated systems. Wherever Ohm's law cannot be affected, Ohm's law will be this. When you have a complicated network where there are more than one band, there are more than, there is more than one cell in the circuit, right? you cannot have your own. Very, very, very common. That's why we'll be doing a problem based on this topic. It's not then by by the one system of by the zero. Nothing is mentioned. Yeah. Yeah.
So should we try a problem from your textbook? There is an example given. Next question. Example three point seven. So, what a question? We are able to observe this question has two sets. I suggest you want to draw it. I minus I one plus 
I one minus I two. Can you understand by your work? I minus I one plus I one minus I two. So I one and I one are common. So the current that is going to flow here is I minus I two. That means now I minus I two is entering towards C. I two is entering towards C. So both these currents put together will give an output. How much will be the output? I minus I two plus I two, which is again I. What I am trying to do here is, whatever is the current that has left the circuit, will come back to you. No, it will not be. Because I have taken this I to be the net current. I didn't say that this current is there, so the current will actually get cancelled at some point, we get added at some point. Okay, that you will understand when you read the concept of cells in series at that point. We want to learn. This is possible. Right? So, by default, they will only give you the circuit, they will not give you all the current circuits. It is your job to find out. Okay, second thing. You need to observe the number of unknowns. How many unknowns are there? I, 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 three unknowns. So, three unknowns means three equations are to be formed. Three equations means three loops to be considered. So, when I say a loop, right, you are free to choose your own loop. But the important point to be noted here is when you are taking a particular loop, of all the three loops, at least one of the loops should have a pattern. You cannot take all the three loops without a pattern. At least one of the loops should have a pattern. Are you able to understand? So, what are the loops you guys are able to see? I am able to see the loop A, B, C, A. A, B, C, A. Right. So, when I go from A to B, when I go from A to B, what are you able to observe? So, we are able to have one resistor. And across that resistor, what is the current going? I1. So, how should I write this? Plus I1 into 4 or minus I1 into 4? Minus I1. Minus I1. Minus I1. Now you would have understood. It's From higher to low. I'm oh, sorry, Akash, what were you saying? Continue, sir. I will write minus. Because if you are walking in the direction of current, so when you are saying A to B, right? You are actually walking in the direction of current. In the direction of current is always negative. Why? Because current by default goes to high to low position. So when you go from A to B, can you write it as minus 4 and 10? Okay, that is done. When you go from B to C, again you are walking in the direction of current. In the direction of current is negative minus 4 and 10. And when you are walking from C to A, what is happening? C to A, again you are walking in the direction of current. Minus I. Correct answer. Why I? Because I into 1. And across the battery, across the sensor, you are walking from lower to higher. So that becomes plus 10. So you started with A, you came back to A. Sum of all these values. Will be equal to C. So, what are the loop I considered? I considered the loop ABC AA, which is in the clockwise direction. So, I call this as loop number one. Here is, right, I could make a note. Now, I want you all to take the loop ACDA and write the equation at it. Don't pass.
Can you explain why it's plus? Can you explain why it is plus four i minus i one, sir? From D to A. Because D to A current is in this direction. So current is in this direction. You are walking the opposite direction. Current flows from higher yes, to lower, so you are moving to lower to higher. Akash, did you get it? Yes, sir. Yeah, that is why it is as plus. And moreover, one more important point is when you are writing this kind of an equation, right? If let's say five terms are there, out of which four are negative, at least one should be positive. Not all the terms will be negative. Because some of all negative terms can't be zero, or some of all positive terms also can't be zero. You need to have a different combination. Is it clear? Right. No. Based on this knowledge, we will try to discuss the concept of terminal voltage we need to do. Okay. In of this, I hope everybody has written this equation, right? You have written it as? Okay. 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 This problem, uh, fortunately, you have a few No, A, B, D, when I take it like this, there was a battery here. 
I didn't take it as A B C D D. So right now the next thing is relation between EMF and terminal voltage. Relation between EMF and terminal voltage. So let's say there is a cell with EMF E and enter the resistance R. Okay. So I'm going to discuss two important things here, which are going to be If I put the direction of arrow bar like this and say the current is going in this direction, what does that mean? See, generally, when you take a cell, right, a cell will not be like this. If you connect the cross in any ways, if I take the resistor here, then what I can say is this cell. Is supplying energy to this resistor. Can I say that? Because look at the direction of current. Or to put it in other terms, can we say that this cell is getting discharged? Can I say this? This also. Are you able to understand what I am trying to say? I am trying to say that the cell is getting discharged. Okay. Now, I am only concerned about the relation between the EMF and the terminal potential. Absolutely. If I take the potential of point A to the EM, right? So out of the points A and B, look at the batteries terminals and tell me which one will be at higher potential. So point A is obviously at higher potential. So when you are going from A to B, Observe. So, VA across this battery, you are walking from across the cell, you are walking from higher to lower potential. So, can I write it as VA minus E right up plus what should I write? Plus I in R. Are you guys clear with what I want? So, across these two, I am saying minus E plus I into R should be equal to. DB. So what I did here is applied the source voltage down, but I did apply for a closed circuit, but rather I applied for a circuit. So I repeated this in. I start at A, so I had a potential of EA. I lost some energy of E here, and I gained some energy of IR here, and I landed at B. So whatever changes I underwent here will be the remaining value that I So, if I rearrange this equation, can I say B A minus B B D will be equal to E minus I R? And this B A minus B B D is what is called as terminal voltage. So, the relation between terminal voltage and E M F is terminal voltage is equal to E M F minus I into R, but only when the cell is getting discharged. Only when the cell is getting discharged. That like here, we can open this. It is open only. But if the terminal voltage will come into picture only when current starts going. So what I'm trying to say is, as soon as you take this battery and connect it across an external resistance R, then it starts supplying some current, right? When it starts supplying current, when you try to measure the potential between these two points, it will 
will no more come out as E, rather it will come out as E minus I. Because also E minus I is there. When it is open condition, what would have happened to the value of current? What did I say? Open conditions. Current is not known. Means current is zero. If I put the value zero here, what will happen? Then the terminal voltage will be equal to the EMF. That is why I told EMF is the potential within the existing upper the terminal set in open condition. Okay. See this one you will find it in textbook, but there is another point also which we need to take. That is the reason I am trying to stress on the point is so. Okay. So have to think about it. Stop. Six, Stop. Stop. Tomorrow's class, we'll see what it happens. The cell is getting charged. So, before we close the bit, let's think about the fact that there is a possibility that if it charges the cell, the cell is the one which is already giving you energy, but how can you again charge the cell? Is there a concept of that sort existing? Can it be done? By connecting it to this example, I can give you mobile phones to talk about a laptop battery. All these things, what happens? They get drained right after something, you charge it again, and they store some energy and keep something in the for some more. Right? Now we need to see what will happen to the same terminal voltage in terms of EMF when the cell is getting charged. That we will see in more of this. Any other doubt? Guys, any other doubt? No, sir. So, only any doubt, guys? No, sir. Good. Okay, then we can wind up. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah.